Hi everybody, today we're going to be looking at Estuary, which is the sequel, if you will, to Confluence. It's the new default skin for Cody 17. Uh, it was developed by Piers and Phil65, both members of the team, and we're very excited to show it off to you guys. So uh, let's get started. So we see here we start with the uh, skin settings page, just, just to give you an idea of where we're going. Uh, the skin, obviously, as you see, is set up as an estuary. Uh, and there are a few interesting points to make about this page. Number one, and most importantly, estuary is a little bit different than Confluence. Confluence has always had the ability to have different themes and different colors, but it never actually used that ability. So with estuary, one of the first things uh, we wanted to do was make sure that themes and colors were something that it could actually happen. So as you can see here with the default theme, uh, it's sort of a greenish color, uh, sort of bluish greenish, um, and it's also a flat theme, which means, uh, if you can tell, the, the front windows uh, and the back panel all look like they're on the same surface. We can change all of that, though, by going to Theme Skin Default and selecting Curial. When we do that, as you can see, we go back to that sort of faux 3D effect that was so popular in Confluence, where the main screen uh, images are all sort of towards the front, and then the background is a little bit further in the back, thanks to some interesting shadowing effects. Now, we can also switch to a bunch of other things. We can switch to a green color like this, uh, a maroon kind of red color, uh, and we can also, there's also orange obviously, but there's also pink, which I think is especially, it's a very different color for Cody, and I like it a lot. It's definitely worth, I don't know, just showing to the various family members and seeing if maybe your kids like it, because I think it's fantastic. But for the rest of this, uh, the rest of this presentation, let's get stick to the skin defaults. Uh, one other thing I want to show in the skin settings is the actual estuary settings. Uh, and there are two main kind of points here. The first is that you can turn on and off a bunch of different things. Uh, uh, most importantly, maybe you can turn the weather info on and off from here. You can enable auto scrolling. You can use and turn off animations if, uh, for example, you're using a CPU that's a little weaker. You can always turn off animations and uh, various other things. You can also turn on the main menu uh, items. So if, for example, you don't have any movies in your library, you can always turn that off from here. And you can turn them on again, uh, as we'll see in a little while. Uh, so that's skin settings. Now let's go to the main settings area. Here, you may be familiar with this look. This is actually fairly similar to the settings page on transparency. Uh, as you can tell, there's uh, a lot of the same things, appearance, video, music, Really, aside from the fact that it's tiles rather than a list, it's very similar to Confluence's settings page, with two big exceptions. The first one is uh, system information, which used to be on the home screen, has now been put into settings. Uh, with that said, if you open it, it looks pretty much like the same system information, just sort of with, a, with an estuary flair. The other thing, and this is very different compared to Confluence, is a new setting called Media Sources. Uh, the idea here is that it makes sense to be able to put where you set up your media sources in your settings. Um, so if you select that, you are then taken to a page where you can choose whether you want to interact with your video sources, music sources, or picture sources. For now, we're going to skip all of that, though. Um, and that is the settings page. Now from here, let's go to the home screen, which I think is the biggest and most exciting difference. And here it is. The, the new Kodi home screen, which, as you can tell, is very media-centric. Uh, the idea that we had going into this was that Confluence was a little outdated. You have to scroll through way too many menus to actually get to the content you're looking for, and we just don't think that's... That's just not the modern approach to media centers. And so we've decided to try to pull as much media as we possibly can away from all of those menus and put them directly on the home screen. So starting out with movies, here are how things work. Uh, the first menu is in progress movies, which are movies that you started but you haven't gotten around to finishing. Next, recently added movies. Um, and this is, this is the one area where it's much like Confluence. This lists 
uh, a select amount of recently added movies. You can see, you can scroll to the right and see a list more. It's not the full list of recently adding, added movies that Cody supports though. To get to that, if you go to the very top, there's this additional bar that lets you go to a bunch of different subcategories. And from here, you can go to recently added movies by clicking that star. And here is the full list of recently added movies. From there, you can also go check out various years of movies. For example, let's say I wanted to watch a movie from 1981 for some reason, and my only movie in my library is Stripes. Uh, there's also movie sets, and this is kind of your standard movie sets. For example, Captain America is the two Captain America movies. Uh, you can search by genre, that includes movies and, uh, excuse me, that includes uh, animation and crime and foreign films and horror and all that stuff. Uh, you can search by actors, and that's uh, a very long list. You can search by tags, which we'll get to in just a moment. Um, and you can also check out the library route, which is all of these things. Finally, you can update the library from here. This isn't a search option so much as an option that really should have been on the home screen from the beginning. We'll get back to tags in one more second. I just want to show the rest of these categories down here. So in progress, recently added movies, unwatched movies, and if you don't really care what movie you want to watch, you just want to pick something, there's also random movies, which just kind of randomly pulls from your, your list and gives you kind of a nice diverse array of possible options to look at. Uh, tags is something that wasn't really heavily heavily introduced in Confluence. So I thought it would be nice to, to take a look at tags from this end, from, from the estuary end, because I feel like uh, Estuary's done a very nice job of laying out tags, and here's how they work. As you noticed in that collections list, uh, Captain America only included two, the two Captain America movies, but didn't include the entire list of Marvel movies. Which is a shame, but it's not a big problem, because what we can do is we can create a new tag. Uh, I've already done it, but let's, uh, no, I've already done it, so I'll show you what it looks like. You go to Marvel, and here is the full list of all the Marvel movies that I have. So let's say we think Ant-Man shouldn't be in this list. So we can just go back uh, and hit the context menu on Marvel and select Manage. And then we can add and remove library, uh, move movies from this, uh, from this menu. So here we are, just select Ant-Man. Click OK, and now Ant-Man has been removed from the list. But that's not all. We can also hit the context menu, hit go to manage, and add movies. And then we can go through the entire list of movies in our, in our entire library until we get to whichever one we think still needs to be added. In this case, of course, Ant-Man. We select it. And we can select as many others as we want. For example, maybe I could select Annie. I won't be, but I could. Um, then once we've selected everything we want to add, we click OK, and Ant-Man is back. And of course, you can arrange these uh, the, every the movie in this these tags by just changing the sort by. So right now it's by year. You can change it by rating, your own rating, MPAA ratings, uh, the length of the movies, the date they were added to your collection, the play count, and uh, the, of course the title. But I personally like to arrange them by date, uh, and that's how I've got them. So that's tags, and it's super handy. Um, and that's the entire movies category. We'll move on now, and we'll probably try to take up a little bit less time going through these other categories. This is TV show categories, and it's a lot of the same stuff. In progress TV shows, recently added episodes, which you should be familiar with if you've used Confluence, unwatched TV shows, and that's about it. Um, once again, there's also recently added episodes, and then all the various ways to organize the TV shows up at the top of the list. And of course, you can also update the library from here. Um, now that we've taken a look at these things, let's also take a look at the actual drilled down menu. Uh, and movies and TV shows drill down menu is actually fairly similar, so we can just probably stick with TV shows and you'll get the idea. So this first, this first uh, option is the info wall, and you might be familiar with it if you've used various skins on Cody in the past. We also have a regular wall, which just lists a whole bunch of different TV shows. Uh, the banner list, uh, and this is unique to TV shows. This particular list doesn't exist in movies. It's just a TV show thing. 
uh, a fan art list, which is a really cool way to show off your content, but not necessarily a great way to search through it. So my recommendation, if you're going to use this particular view, is only to use it for like a family night or to show it off to friends and family. Uh, there's the list view, which I think a lot of people are going to prefer because it just includes just about as much content as you can possibly put in one screen. As many TV shows as you can fit, the information about the TV show, uh, when, it was, when it was created, everything. Um, the poster view, the shift view, which is kind of a neat take on poster view, just gives you a little bit more information, um, and back to the info wall. Now, while we're at the info wall, I want to show you one other cool thing. Let's go to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now, instead of actually opening it and checking out the channels, I'm going to hit Info. This takes us to the nice, cool info page, but there's much more to this page than you might imagine. The standard info page lets you hit play, you can add your own ratings, you can show the fan art of the show, which is pretty cool. Um... You can actually choose the fan art, obviously, and you can refresh the whole show if you need to. Uh, but things get a lot cooler if you go up to this top row. Um, now, you can, for example, select Clark Gregg, and it'll search and do a list and show you all of the things that Clark Gre Gre uh, Gregg has been in. But you can also hit up from here, and it will take you to the new extended info uh, page which gives you so much more about essentially everything there is to know about Clark Gregg or any actor in this list. Uh, so it'll give you his biography, all of the movies that he's in, not just the movies from your library, TV roles he's been in, uh, various movie crew member things he's done. He also does a search for YouTube videos that he's a part of. It gives you art and fan art all for Clark Gregg. It's a really pretty cool way of doing a search for the guy, and it gives you all sorts of information that you might not have ever realized you were looking for. Uh, what's another what's another good one? Let's say, oh, here we go. Let's check out New Girl's Zoe Deschanel and see what she's been in. Takes a second. We're going to launch it up. And here's Zoe Deschanel, information about her. Uh, movies she's been in, TV shows she's been in. A bunch of different cool YouTube videos. I won't launch them right now because it's not the point. And a bunch of artwork about her, including various fan art. Um, so that's the new info page. That, what I showed you so far, is what happens if you've already scanned in your library. But what happens if you haven't scanned in something into a category? If you haven't, then here's what you see. This is the music file folder. Um, and as you can see, there's nothing scanned into the library. There's a message that even says your library is currently empty. Uh, in order to populate it, enter the file section. So what we can do is just enter the file section. And then you have the option of adding music where you... Uh, navigate Cody to wherever your folder of movie, uh, excuse me, music is, um, or multiple folders, if you will. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm not going to do that, though. Instead, let's say, for example, you just don't use Cody for music. That's just not your thing. You prefer to use add-ons or whatever. Instead, what you can do is just remove this from the main menu, and it's gone, just like that. Now you never have to look at the the, the, the movies menu again, or the music menu again. But for for the sake of argument, what if later on in life you decide you want a music category? In fact, you, you decide Cody's a great way to use music. Not a problem. You go back to your appearance area, skin settings, main menu items, and you just turn music back on. And there it is again. Music right back where it was. So that's music. Um, we'll go through the other categories real quick. Uh, add-ons, as you can see, what we've done this time around is we've decided to group all the add-ons into one group. Uh, in Confluence, the add-ons went under their individual sections. So programs went into programs. Uh, video add-ons went under the video section. Now we've grouped all the add-ons into their own section and then categorized them. So that we have the video add-ons, music add-ons, program add-ons, etc. And from here you can go to the add-on browser, which I'm not sure if that was clear, which is up at the top here, the add-on browser. Um, and then you can install from repo or you can check out your own add-ons. If you install from repo, 
Uh, you can select music add-ons and just install whatever you want to install. Now, one thing that's worth noting, if you look over here, I also have TV channels, which means I've enabled Cody's built-in PVR functions. I've done this because I have an HD home run at my house. I've actually got two, one for cable and one for the over-the-air TV. Um, and I've connected Cody up to that PVR. And to do that, it's very simple. And I'll show you how to do that right now. What you do is you go to add-ons, then you go to the add-on browser, my add-ons and PVR clients. Then you select your PVR client. Um, I'm just gonna use this one as an example. You go over to enable and you enable it. I've already enabled the PVR HD home run add-on, so I don't need to do that. Then from, from there, you just pretty simply go to settings, uh, TV, and I've already done this too, but you click enable and enable the TV service. Uh, and that should be all you need to do for HD Home Run. For other for other TV services, it might be a little bit more complex, but for HD Home Run, there's really very little to it. There is one other thing you should probably do though, unless you like watching TV shows in the background, which is go to, uh, let's see, go to playback and then change this from start playback minimized uh, it, right, it starts default turned on, you should turn it off, which is what I just did. I'm gonna turn it back on though, just so if you don't know how to turn it off or for some reason you don't in the future, we'll see how to do it. So I've started it turned off and let me make sure the sound's turned off, yep. We'll go ahead and launch a TV show. So here are the channels list, a bunch of channels. Uh, I'll go ahead and launch NBC. This is the over the air TV. And as you can see, I intentionally launched it in the background. That's not a problem at all. What we can do is we go over to the left and here's all these different options you have. You can turn it on, uh, uh, turn it to full screen by selecting this button right here. And there we are full screen. You also, if you have the button on your controller or on a keyboard, you can always turn full screen off and on this way too. Uh, there are a bunch of other cool options here. The, the section that we're on is channels, but we can also switch the section over to, for example, guide or uh, recordings or timers or timer rules. I don't have any of those set up though, so there's not much to show. Uh, one other thing worth looking at is, uh, let's get back into full screen. This is the on-screen display for PVR. Um, and as you'll notice, and this is gonna be the same thing for regular video, uh, it's a lot, It's a, there's a lot less busy than the old uh, Confluence screen was. There's, uh, oops, there's really just a pause button, a stop button, uh, an info button, and then the regular PVR stuff. Um, so let's check out a regular video's on-screen display because there are a few neat things about it that are worth looking at. So we'll launch Big Buck Bunny and then we'll launch the on-screen display, which as you can see is pretty limited. There's a back button, a pause, and a stop. No play buttons at all. Um, there's an info button, which gets you info, shockingly enough. Uh, a bookmarks button, which is pretty useful if you have chapters in your movies. Big Buck Bunny doesn't have chapters though, so we'll skip over it. And then the settings button, which gives you all of the various settings that are available in Kodi uh, for on-screen display. So that's audio settings, video settings, and then you can also download subtitles. Um, and if you select these settings, it's pretty much the same as it was in Confluence. So if we open video settings, this is almost exactly the same sort of settings that Confluence had. Uh, it's just listed on the side instead of in the middle. But otherwise, it's basically the same. The other really cool thing, and this might be my favorite feature of this new on-screen display, instead of using a fast forward and rewind button, what you do is you navigate up to the little slider bar. Then you can press right and that fast forwards. Press right again, it fast forwards faster. If you press left, it slows it down and you can fast forward all the way up to 32X speed. And if you press pass, that of course goes back to playing. So that's the cool on-screen display. Pictures is pretty standard. There's nothing really that amazing about it. And here's a, a bunch of cool information about pictures I took while we were in scale this year. Um, Oops. Uh, there's also videos, and this is where the video sources list is. Um, 
It's not something you're probably going to visit very often. The only reason it's useful is if you have a list of videos that don't fit into the standard movies and TV shows category. Like if you have recorded sports shows or recorded home movies or something like that. They would go here and they, you know, they work fine. Uh, and finally, there's the weather section, which is pretty much the standard weather section. You can go into it. It shows you the weather. There's nothing really that special about it. If you don't know how to set up weather, then you know, it's not a big deal. Finally, the last the last little section here. This is uh, the, the file folder, which is almost exactly the same as it was in Confluence. It's just styled this way. Um, settings, we've checked out. These are the favorites folder. Uh, and I've added various TV channels that I tend to watch and also the Rooster Teeth add-on and the power power section, which once again is basically the same as it was in Confluence. Uh, the last really cool thing worth checking out is one more add-on, which is this one up at the top called Find Whatever. And with this add-on, you can do a search for just about anything you can imagine. So I'll select it and you can do a search for in your local library in YouTube or in the movie database. I'll do a local library search for Matt Damon because he was on the screen and now I'm reminded of him. Matt Damon. And here is a list of movies that Matt Damon is in. Pretty, pretty simple. We're pretty excited about Estuary and we hope you guys will be too. Uh, once the Alpha 1 comes out, we, we hope you'll check it out download it, kind of play around with Estuary and tell us what you think. And most importantly, we're really, we really are looking for feedback on this. So if you have something you want to say, whether, you know, positive or negative, but hopefully constructive regardless, feel free to visit the Estuary sub forum and kind of talk about what you think would benefit uh, from your insight. Um, and further, if you find any bugs, we're very much open to hearing about them. Uh, all you need to do, make sure you include a bug report if you want to submit a bug or tell us that you see something wrong, because otherwise there's no way we can reproduce it and there's no way it's ever going to get fixed. Simple as that. So, um, yeah, take a look at it, check it out, let us know what you think, and uh, we'll see you on this other side. Thanks for watching.